Well, hello, welcome back to Tail Three Cabins. Today, I want to talk a little bit about Starlink. And Starlink has been around for a little while. It made some changes since its first couple iterations that it's been out through beta testing and then uh, the final product. We decided to purchase the RV version of Starlink, and this will allow us to travel with it. It's going to be a little bit higher of a monthly fee, about $135 a month, but that is pay as you go. So you can pay it in one month increments if you're not gonna be traveling for a while or if you don't need it for a while, you could turn it off and then turn it back on when you need it. There's a few things going on with us in our Southern Ohio cabin. We're, we're gonna be tearing that down pretty soon, which means we're gonna be tearing down the antenna tower that helps give us some internet via cell phone reception. And it's been pretty spotty throughout the last couple of years. It was never any good, but we used to have Verizon down there and then our Verizon stopped working. AT&T works down there occasionally, but when they switched over and got rid of 3G signals, that really put a damper on what we used to get down there. So it's always a mixed bag when we go down there. Nothing is always very reliable. We thought with us rebuilding the cabin down there that we would want something if we need to talk to contractors, if we're waiting for a delivery, or if we have an emergency that we need a little bit more reliable of a connection. So we're gonna test this out. When I did make my order, they said that it would take two to four weeks to fill out the order, but it actually showed up two days after I ordered it. So it got here pretty quick. I've had it for two days sitting in the box. I thought it was a decent day out here in February, a little bit chilly, but I thought it would be a good time just to open this up, set it up, I kind of share that with you. We'll take it down to Southern Ohio, do some testing down there. We'll test it with some of the trees around us here in Northern Ohio and just get an idea how well this thing's gonna work. So to start off, I've gone on YouTube and, and watched a lot of unboxing videos. And right off the bat, I can see that um, the packing has changed a little bit. This packing used to be all plastic. Now it is like a cardboard here. So that's changed. A lot of people say save the plastic and use it when you're transporting it. It's a great way to store it or save this whole case. For us in our RV though, that's going to be a different story. This is, would take up a lot of room. We're going to have to figure something else out on how we're going to store it. Maybe store the components separately. Can't see this being too durable if it's not plastic anymore. So here is the base for the antenna. Here is the dish. Here are your instructions. This is your wireless router, your AC plug, and a 75 foot cable. Down here looks like we have some more cover your butt type of regulatory type of stuff in here. So that's it. That's everything in the box here. I was going to say this almost looks like it was used, but I think it's just um, the, the cardboard kind of rubbed off on here a little bit, just dusty. One thing I will say about the size of this though is it looks bigger in person. You see a lot of YouTube videos and it doesn't look this big. So again, with our RV, it's not a very large RV. We have a decent amount of storage, but we'll probably have to find a special place for this so it's not gonna get damaged anywhere. I have one of my power stations out here and I'm gonna use that to power it. And it'll also give me an idea how many watts this thing is gonna use right off the bat. Plug in the lengthy cable that comes with the dish into the router. Looks like it only goes in one way. Actually, it does have a little slight um, taper to it. Almost looks like a miniature HDMI cable. So it does go in a certain direction and it looks like you can only feed it in a certain direction. Stays AC plug. I'm gonna go open up the Starlink app and do a little setup here on the app. So I guess they had a few iterations of the satellite dish here. This one is rectangular. It appears that you also have a choice of a round or a square uh, or a flat one. So I'm going to pick the rectangular one, confirm that. Check for obstructions. So it is the middle of February. The leaves are off the trees, but we do have a large perimeter of trees around us. So it says go outside, find an open area, scan the entire sky. So I'm ready. Point my camera up. and view the result. You may want to find a better spot. Well, we really don't want to, so we're gonna to try to set it up here. And we're gonna try a couple different spots in our yard. But for now, we're just gonna try it where I'm all set up here. Start setup, confirm. Got the AC outlet on.
assuming the Wi-Fi device's name is Stinky, they want you to log into your account. Enter a Wi-Fi name. Okay, it says reconnect. All right, it says it's connected. Doing a speed test just for the heck of it. I'll go back into the Starlink app in a second. Well, I guess that ain't working, so let's go back to the Starlink app. And I'm back in the Starlink app. It says connecting. Setup complete. You are all set. I hit the done button. Calibrating Starlink. Your Starlink just powered on. Network performance should be stabilized after about 15 minutes. So when you look at their coverage map, you'll see that the eastern portion of the United States is basically congested compared to out west. This area could be throttled, although although I'm kind of wondering if it's throttled like in an area like this. We are in northern Ohio. Everybody has cable internet. I don't think there'd be too many Starlink satellite dishes in this portion of northern Ohio. You'd probably have to go south about 30 or 40 miles if uh, you're in a rural type of area. If I look at the power station, it says that it is pulling anywhere from 20 to... 70 watts of power so I don't know if that's just because it's trying to lock in the satellites and that wattage will stabilize over time but I have heard that Starlink will use 50 to 75 watts of power so this is one thing if you're in an RV that you would want to be careful of our RV battery is 200 amp hours and if we were to have Starlink on all day, it would drain the battery in one day just having Starlink on. Okay, so I did get a speed test done, and it said 30 megabytes per second. Those that are unthrottled or in areas that are uncongested usually get speed tests up well over 100, 150 megabytes per second. A another thing that I've read and that I've seen on YouTube is that uh, if you are in an iffy area, and just the way the satellites are moving overhead, that you could have brief outages if you're streaming something you may not be aware of that outage just because you're being buffered and you have a lot of data already loaded into your streaming device but if you're on something that is uh, constantly loading let's say you're on a secure site like a bank site or something like that and you lose that signal and then you get it back you may have to re-log in every time that happens. So if I were to do a speed test down in southern Ohio with the way our cell signals are down there, if we're getting a signal, most of the time we are lucky to get maybe two megabytes per second. Really it's just enough for text messages and to load web pages very slowly. So the dish is reorienting itself. It appears to be facing more north. Let's just do another speed test and this appears to be much better now that the dish has reoriented itself. So majority of the time, like I said, we're just going to use this for when we're in an RV. Uh, we plan to do a couple more out west trips and out west was really kind of a bummer when we were trying to stay in contact with the outside world. We have our rental cabin down in the Smoky Mountains and we usually want to try and stay in contact with the renters down there, handle our bookings any emergencies that arise. I'm also the HOA president down there, so I'm usually the go-to person when something's going wrong in the HOA itself. Probably get one or two calls per day, so I still wanted to keep in touch with the outside world, even though it's a shame that uh, compared to 30, 40 years ago when you went to get away, you could really get away, but now it seems like this is just the world that we're living in, and we all have responsibilities, and ours just need us to have a constant contact with the rest of the world no matter where we're at. So the speed test was definitely a lot quicker after the dish reoriented itself. So all in all the setup went pretty fast. It was pretty simple. You were just gonna plug this into the base, plug it power cable in, plug in the uh, antenna cable into the router and we're up and running. Okay if you're continuing to look at the app here it's gonna show you every time there's a possible extraction and if you go you can see how many times outage. Um, sometimes it was as much as 13 seconds. You can see when we first booted up here on the bottom, you can see when it was searching. And then since it's reoriented itself, it has had a few outages here and there. So if you look in the direction that this is looking at, there are tree branches in the way. So let's move this thing over. We'll move it over into the middle of our yard and we'll see how this does. And then I'm going to take it in the backyard. In the middle of my yard. I'm going to put the power back on my power station. Doing another speed test. Okay, so we are going to measure 
my Wi-Fi signal now. This is walking around outside. So you can walk around your home and see if you have dead spots or weak areas. Like I said, I just happen to be outside doing this just because I want to get an idea of uh, what kind of range we have when we are down in southern Ohio. Okay, so I'm down here in Southern Ohio and I thought I would give Starlink a try. This is uh, one thing out of curiosity, especially with this router. I'd like to know how much coverage it would give me on top of our hill here when we're all hunting in different directions, usually a couple hundred feet into the woods in all different directions. So this just a little test. The big test will be bringing it down by the cabin because that has a little bit more cover to trees. This is pretty wide open right here, but we'll see just how well it does. I'm going to plug it into uh, one of my portable power stations. Now, this is a little elaborate, but I just want to know if we have backup situations. I normally bring my router that has a SIM card in it, and that works pretty good up here. It's an AT&T SIM card, and it seems to pick up a good signal AT&T up here. Verizon, not a chance. So it oriented itself straight up, which normally likes to face towards the north. So that's a good sign when it comes down to going by the cabin because we have more coverage of trees down there. Yep, I'm getting all my text messages coming in now. So it picked up Starlink on the uh, Wi-Fi. Just do a quick speed test. All right, can't complain about that. It'll be interesting to see um, if it picks up different satellites during different times of the day in which direction it faces. But right now it's facing straight up. So it's doing good so far. My power station, it's pulling about 27 watts. So this power station will last 10 hours to power the Starlink. But it'd be kind of neat to know if we wanted to use this up here. And of course, if it was pouring rain or something, I would protect the router. But I'm going to go walk into the woods now, walk into a couple of our um, tree stands and just see how well that router does. The cheap $50 wireless router that I bought that has the built-in SIM card for it, um, that does pretty good. I get two bars from about 500 feet away. So I'm hoping, to, I'm hoping this will do the same. All right. Still got a couple bars. So it's showing two out of three bars on the uh, router from here, which is good. I'm glad it'll get this far. Just do another speed test. A little lower, I don't know. The speed test from here went down to 14 megabytes per second, which is fine for sitting up here and just uh, doing minor stuff and be able to check in with the outside world, text messages, emails, uh, maintaining our cabin. And it's telling me right now to check my Wi-Fi setup, saying that maybe moving it closer so it's about, through the woods here, it's probably about 400 feet, 500 feet to that clearing where I am right now. So it's not too bad. So it's nice to know that this will work up All right, here. so doing a speed test on my phone now, just from speedtest.net, just to see if there's a difference between what the satellite dish is doing and what the router is doing. So again, it's around 14 or 15 megabytes per second, which again is not bad for being in the middle of nowhere here where before there was nothing. Okay, so let's go down. We'll go back down to the cabin, give that a try, see how it works around there. Like I said, it's a little bit more enclosed, plus the cabin's going to be in a way, and we'll just see what the best way for mounting this is going to be in the future, especially when we start building a new structure down. Oh, check that out. Remember how when we first started this little test, the satellite was oriented straight up. Now it is facing more to the north. Okay, down back at the cabin, I got Starlink set up. We just put it on the shed roof for now. 75 feet of cable is long enough to get to the cabin. The router is outside for now. We could always put it inside and protect it if we need to. And we tested it out and it worked out well. It worked out pretty good, almost as good as being on top of our clearing. 
We did have a rainstorm come through in the evening. We were using it to stream television shows. We had a rainstorm come through in the evening, and that didn't seem to bother the signal at all. So all in all, it worked pretty well down by the cabin area. We just have to figure out exactly what the setup is going to be every time we come down here, especially when we have the new place up and running. So as you can see, we're pretty tight in here. The house is right behind us. You ain't going to see anything over that. It's going to have to go straight up or with the tree obstructions here. So we'll see what happens if it starts to recalibrate itself. So I set this up and let it sit for over a half hour and basically nothing happened. Nada. The dish did not move at all. So it didn't even have a decent enough satellite to catch anything to calibrate itself. So just to show you if you're in a tight spot and with trees in a way, it may not always work for you. A feature that is not in here at the making of this video is it would be nice to be able to have the ability to turn on and off your RV mode on the fly. You need internet to turn it back on if you have it off. So if you set up your Starlink and you're in the middle of nowhere and don't have internet, you're not going to be able to turn it back on and Starlink is not going to give you enough data to do that. So you have to plan ahead. Uh, one thing that did happen since we ordered this and we got the satellite dish maybe about two weeks ago is now Starlink has upped their prices for certain folks and maybe lowered them for others. But what they've gone is they've gotten rid of the mobile plan, which was if you bought Starlink for your home and you decide you want to take it on the road, maybe an RV or something like that, you could add mobile to it. It tacked on about another $20 a month. It went from $115 to $130. They've gotten rid of that mobile plan and you cannot get any more. If you have it, you're grandfathered in. But now when you pick Starlink, you're either gonna pick the RV plan or you're gonna pick the uh, basically home base plan. The cheapest route right now is if you're at home and that you're not gonna be taking it on the road, you're gonna keep it stationary. And now your other choice is RV plan. And that's what we picked when we ordered this. So the RV plan went up $15. It is now $150 a month. It was 135 when we first got this two weeks ago, and now it's jumped up to 150. You can still pause it at any time. After we're done here in Southern Ohio today, I don't see a need to use it probably for another month when we come back down here and we're gonna start demolishing our cabin down below. But uh, so I'll probably pause it for a month and start it up again. We'll see how that goes. I was a little disheartening. I would hope that as more people jump on board that the prices would just stabilize or go even down a little bit. I know Starlink still has to put a lot more satellites up there. They have some big plans. They're not making profits on this yet within two weeks of ordering this and then the price jumps up $15. To try to make this a wash, we got rid of our cable TV, which is saving us about 170 bucks a month now. And we're still doing basically what we were doing before with TV, just uh, jumping through different hoops. We'll be saving $170, so that'll help offset the cost of this. But I appreciate you watching. I hope you enjoy and subscribe to these videos. Stick around if you want to know about the three different cabins we have and live in rural life here and there and our vacation rental in the Smokies and just the little projects that we have going on, whether it's a tractor project, demolishing our cabin down below and getting ready to put a new structure on there. A lot of things are happening this year. So stick around if you're into those things. Uh, hit that little subscribe button. Click on the little bell when you want to know when a new one is coming out and uh, keep an eye on us. Take care, everybody.